Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'll be installing some beefy front brakes on the V8 S10. I'll also be wrapping up the disc conversion outback that I started in the last episode. There's a bunch of other things that need to be hooked up as well, like the new booster, new master cylinder, parking brake cables, lines, yada, yada, yada. I'm also going to give you guys a look at what wheels I'm going to end up running on the truck. So there's a lot of stuff to do, but hopefully by the end of this video, we will finally get this truck back on the ground. Just in case you missed the last episode, I put a link in the description box below. I swapped in a custom rear end into the truck that has a limited slip differential, upgraded axles, and more. It's going to be a pretty sweet setup. I also covered a lot of really important updates just to catch everybody up to this point as far as all the progress that I've been making off camera. The wheels that are currently on the back of the truck are just there for temporary fitment purposes. The new wheels are sitting at the end of this table. Regardless though, I can't tell you guys how awesome of a feeling it is to finally see some kind of wheels back on the truck. It gives me somewhat of a sense of completion that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Now more than ever, the light truly is at the end of the tunnel as far as being able to actually go out and drive the truck. So as far as the front brakes, I ended up ditching all of the factory equipment which consists of 10 and a half inch internally ventilated rotors and single piston calipers in favor of a Willwood Dynapro brake kit which has 12.19 inch internally ventilated cross drilled and slotted rotors as well as big six piston calipers. Here's the part number in case anybody was curious. What's really nice about this kit compared to a typical big brake kit, like something that has 14 inch discs or larger, this will be significantly better than the factory stuff by far. The 350 probably added like 100 pounds or so of extra weight, so some extra bite certainly wouldn't hurt, but this will actually allow me to run a factory 15 inch wheel. Before we get started, a huge thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for supporting the channel. If you guys have some projects going on or you need to get some maintenance done on your daily driver, don't forget to check out O'ReillyAuto.com and take advantage of the exclusive discount code SOBKYLE20, which gets you 20% off of purchases of $100 or more. I put a link in the description box below. These are the wheels I'm going to end up running. They're late 80s Monte Carlo SS wheels that have been professionally refurbished. These are some of my favorite factory GM wheels at the time. Very sporty, sharp edged, I think it complements the, the boxiness of the truck quite well. The spokes and all of the pockets are painted silver, while the lip and all of the edges right here, including the portion of the center cap, is all polished. I mean, just, just fantastic, and you can actually buy um, licensed GM reproduction center caps for these too, which is, is just going to look awesome. What's also really nice, again, these are going to clear the Willwood brake kit, and because of the similarities between the G-body suspension and the S10 suspension, this is going to bolt up exactly like factory because S10s were also offered with 15 by 7 inch wheels so as far as offset and backspacing and everything like that these wheels are identical they're very sporty and I think they're going to do a lot with giving the truck just a whole new look. In an effort to familiarize myself with all of this and gather all my tools and hopefully streamline the filming process, I went ahead and installed most everything on the passenger side. So we're going to go ahead and kick things off with installing the driver's side. As you can see, this is going to look really, really awesome. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Real quick, I want to give you guys just a bit of background in case you thought any of these parts looked familiar. I originally bought this brake kit for the S10 Crew Cab project, which if you hadn't already seen on social media, not too long ago I decided to actually let that project go. At the end of the day, it was just way beyond my means. I don't have the fabrication skills to build something like that. I'm still learning how to do <laughs> all of this. I had really good intentions and my buddy Joe and I were going to build it together, but 
before I got way too deep into something that I just wasn't very comfortable with, I decided to actually let Joe take the project over. So I'll keep you guys posted on social as far as the progress that he's gonna make on his end. Plus, I really wanna start working on our 69 Chevelle because that's been a long time coming and I know a lot of people have been looking forward to that car for a long time. So I think it's just a smarter utilization of money and time, especially when I can repurpose so many things that I had gotten for the crew cab on the Chevelle on this S10. It's, it's just gonna work out great. Anyway, that's that. So I've already modified these spindles to accept the caliper adapter brackets. So I still have clips from the video of the crew cab where I started doing that. So let me go ahead and cover the basics as far as what needed to be done to fit all of that. And then we'll move on with installing the other parts. I ended up taking these spindles off of the crew cab and you know swapping them with the ones that I had already installed here because these were already cut and I didn't want to cut up another set so it just it worked out you know repurposing stuff the caliper adapter brackets can bolt on to factory spindles or drop spindles it doesn't make any difference you still have to do the same modifications the first thing is cutting off the ears where the factory caliper would have mounted then there's two indicated holes in the directions that you need to drill out and then tap some 3 8 24 fine threads for the bolts that come with the adapter brackets. Now let's bolt on the adapter bracket. Next up, the hub assembly. This actually has two different bolt patterns in it, five by four and three quarters and five by four and a half. The S10 is five by four and three quarters, so I went ahead and double checked that with my wheels, got the studs in place, now I just gotta put some red Loctite and tighten them down. Before installing the inner and outer wheel bearings, they need to be packed thoroughly with grease. Now, to make this really easy, O'Reilly actually has this thing called a handy packer. You fill up all of your high temperature wheel bearing grease in there, drop the wheel bearing down, then use that press to squish it down and it forces the grease all the way through the bearing. So you get everything that you need and then you can drop it on in. When it comes to pressing in this grease seal right here, which you have to get flush with the hub surface, a 46 millimeter socket and a nylon hammer really come in handy. Now for the two piece rotors. The aluminum hat bolts to the rotor and then the hat bolts to the hub assembly. When everything is bolted together, you want the rotor to sit right in between the two pads. So when you go to put the caliper on, you need to do some test fitting to see if you're gonna have to shim it anymore. These are the bolts that attach the caliper to the caliper adapter bracket. And Willwood recommends go ahead and put it on two shims per side. After test fitting on the passenger side, I actually needed three shims. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the driver's side double check my measurements, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll re-shim it. After a quick measure, it looks like three shims are gonna do the trick. It's also important to remember to use the same amount of shims up top and down below to make sure everything stays even. 
The shims go in between the caliper and the caliper adapter bracket and basically pull the caliper more towards the inside of the vehicle, towards the frame as you can see here. The calipers have these two pad retaining pins that I have to pull out next. They're really nice because they help keep everything together. Everything's looking really good, spins freely, no noise, sweet. All right, I went ahead and threw on the temporary wheels, so let's lower it down and see how it sits. Wow, this looks really good. I ended up putting on some OEM fender flares off of one of my parts trucks. I was debating on using factory chrome wheel lip moldings or these, and these win by a long shot. Man, I am pumped. When lowering the truck, I was trying to achieve more of a level stance, but I think I didn't take into account the added weight from the 350, which probably added about a hundred pounds or so over the front end so it's squatting a little bit more than I thought it would so the truck still has a rake to it but to be perfectly honest I actually like it a lot more than I thought I would I still have a half inch lowering block that I could put in the back just to drop it a tad but I'm pretty happy with this now let's fire it up and check front tire clearance Yeah, this thing's gonna be kind of fun. One interesting thing I wanted to share right quick is that these wheels actually don't fit the Willwood calipers. It's touching in two spots on the caliper just enough to where when the truck is up in the air, I can't freely rotate the wheel. But even though they're the same dimensions, the Monte Carlo wheels fit just fine. It's tight, but the differences in the casting create just enough space that, you know, it's all good, so while the calipers will fit most 15 inch wheels, it really just depends on the application. Now for the brake lines. It took me some time to figure out how to hook up the rear brake, so let me just show you what I ended up doing. The instructions for the disc brake conversion kit state that you can reuse the factory hard lines, but because I have a different rear end, I was having trouble with things not lining up. And just with the general condition of the lines and the fittings, I decided it would just be better to make my own setup. I went down to O'Reilly and grabbed some 3 16 copper nickel tubing, which if you've never used this stuff before, it's awesome. 
compared to traditional steel tubing, this stuff can easily be bent by hand. You can bend the steel ones as well, but this takes a lot less effort and you can bend it a lot more precisely. So I ended up using my flaring tool, made my own flares, got some new fittings, got a new upper brake hose. So everything back here is brand new. Coming from the calipers, there's actually a banjo bolt on the bottom where a stainless steel braided line connects to, and that runs underneath and up over the axle tube to tie into the copper nickel tubing. So everything is secure with new brake clamps. It's all looking awesome. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I ended up getting into a groove of just making progress, so I completely overlooked filming any clips of installing the brake booster, which I'm kind of upset with myself about that, because installing the booster is easy. Just put it up against the firewall. Excuse me, it's not easy, it's difficult, but it's straightforward. You put it up against the firewall, tighten down the nuts on the back side, and connect it back to the pedal. But before I could install it, I had to wrap up a bunch of wiring because the factory harness went on top of the brake booster. I now have it running underneath the brake booster just for a cleaner look. So I had to make some clamps. I wrapped everything in split loom. It looks really pretty. Everything is tucked far away from the headers. It's awesome, but you can't see any of it, unfortunately. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. During my research, I swear I've seen somewhere about people using master cylinders from late 80s Camaros when it came to installing larger brakes on these trucks because of their larger bore size. But I didn't realize that the lines are on the opposite side and the flaring on the inside is different compared to the S10's stock line. So I ended up deciding not to use this after all and instead I got a universal disc brake master cylinder kit from MBM. This is technically a master cylinder from like a C3 Chevrolet Corvette. The bore size is 1 and 1 8 inches and you have a disc disc proportioning valve here with pre-bent stainless steel lines. I was able to reuse the factory hard lines but I did have to swap I think it was this fitting back here for the uh, the rear brake line, but it bolts up to the stock booster, which is nice, and it looks good too. I've got to give another shout out to my buddy Joe for pointing me in this direction because he came over to help me bleed the brakes and was like, where's your proportioning valve? And I was like, I don't know. I kind of forgot about that because I couldn't use the S10's original proportioning valve because it was for front discs rear drums. I believe if I tried to use that, the rear discs might actually engage before the front. So in those cases, you might need like an adjustable proportioning valve or something like that. But with this kit, again, it has a proportioning valve for four wheel disc brakes. So this should work out pretty nice. I am having a little bit of an issue with the rear brakes. No matter how many times that we've bled this system, the rear calipers just don't want to engage properly. It's like there's still air in the system, which we can't imagine how, but we do have a possible solution. So the front brakes, when I hit the pedal, those calipers bite those discs immediately, but back here, it takes two to three pumps of the pedal to get any meaningful bite. Now, there's obviously big chamber differences between the Willwood calipers and these, but to err on the side of caution, I reached out to a little shop and they got back very quick with a um, very detailed explanation of what might be going on. So I noticed in the instructions that these calipers looked a little bit different and apparently they switched to a different supplier that had a newer style caliper and the bleeder screw is in a slightly different location. What they've seen is that sometimes a pocket of air can get trapped above or below the bleeder screw, I can't remember, but it makes it really hard to truly purge everything out of the system so you can get a spongy pedal feel and all of that. So the solution they recommended, and I'll give it a try off camera, I'll let you guys know how it turns out in the next video, is to undo the caliper adapter bracket, leave all of this intact where I can slide the whole thing up on top of the rotor and have the bleeder screw pointing vertical, which should allow us to purge all of the air out of the system. So. Everything back here will work as good as the front, but again, I'll let you guys know how it turns out in the next video. That being said, I'm going to hold off on installing the parking brake cables for now, at least until I figure out the situation with the rear brakes. 
Before I close this video out, let's fit these Monte Carlo wheels. Like I was saying earlier, the brake clearance with these wheels is very tight, but it does work. However, when the wheel weights were put on the inside of the driver's wheel, they were just barely coming in contact with a couple areas of the caliper. It still rolled freely, but you can feel it. So I did clearance the caliper in those two spots just a little bit, not a whole lot, but now everything rolls freely, nothing binds up, it worked out. It's all coming together. This is incredibly exciting. The tires I ended up using are BF Goodrich Radial TAs, 225-60 R15. Compared to the factory tires, these have a shorter sidewall and a wider contact patch. I didn't want to do an asymmetric tire setup. Obviously, you can fit wider wheels and tires on the backs of these trucks, but up front is a little bit more limited when you start lowering. The biggest point of clearance issue would be the inner fender wells, and this fits pretty much perfect. I don't foresee having any issues out of it, and I love a chunky tire setup, so this fit the bill without having too much poke, and of course, the white letters were a must. I still have to bolt the bed back on, tighten the front and rear suspensions, fill up the differential with fluid, and a handful of other things, but it won't be much longer before I can finally pull this thing outside. Well everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like below. It really helps the video a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because there's a lot more content where that came from. Don't forget to check out O'ReillyAuto.com and use the code SOBKYLE20 to take 20% off of purchases of $100 or more. Thank you guys so much for the support. It truly means a lot. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.